Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And bang! On you, Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Some girls are content to follow the leader. Some girls want to be the leader. That's why more and more bright young women today are turning to nursing for a career. For professional nursing offers unlimited opportunity for women. And the need in top-level supervisory and teaching positions is great. If you're a high school graduate or college student between 18 and 35, and if you can qualify, a full fascinating career in nursing awaits you. Choose your own specialty from hospital staff research, nursing education, and many others. The field is fertile with opportunity for women with imagination and initiative. Perhaps you can qualify for a life of leadership, service, and, of course, security. Learn more about the exciting opportunities now open in nursing. Write to Nursing Careers in care of your postmaster or inquire at your nearest school of nursing. This message is brought to you as a public service. John Markham was a prosperous and successful banker in the city of Seattle. The elderly man knew that after the death of her father, Margie Winton would need help. Though there were many demands on his time, he left the bank to call on the bereaved girl to offer sympathy and assistance. Mr. Markham, I'm so glad to see you. I wanted to thank you for taking over and handling the funeral arrangements. No, no, Margie. There's no need to thank me. Your dad was my friend. Yes, I know. He was a fine man. His only fault was that he was just too stubborn to take advice. About money? Yes. I remember pleading with him several times to let me invest some money for him. I know how Dad was about money, Mr. Markham. It just didn't seem to mean anything to him. I came here, my dear, to tell you that if there's anything I can do to help you settle your dad's affairs and make plans for a future... I've been thinking about that, Mr. Markham. Before he died, Dad told me to go to my Uncle Ben. Dad said that Uncle Ben would take care of me. Oh, yes. Uh, Ben went to the Yukon. Dad rubbed faith him. Uncle Ben struck it rich a short time ago, and he wrote Dad to tell him that he was giving him half interest in his claim. Hey, your dad does have a small balance at the bank. There's enough there to buy the clothing you'll need. I'll take care of whatever arrangements are necessary and telegraph the mounted police to meet you in Dawson. Now, don't worry about a thing, Margie. Everything is going to work out just as your dad would have wanted it. Two weeks later, Margie Winton sailed from Seattle in the care of Captain Winker. The trip was a long and uneventful one. Margie spent most of her time in the pilot house talking to the kindly captain in whose care she was traveling. Captain Winker knew of her father's death, and he did his best to help her forget her grief by telling her of his adventures as a sailor. <laughs> and that was how I came to sail home from the China Sea. Well, that's quite a story, Captain. But tell me, have you ever been to Cameron Creek in the Yukon? Cameron Creek? Why? But last, that's inland. Yes, I know. That's where my Uncle Ben has his claim. I've never been there, Margie. I wish you could tell me something about it. You're thinking maybe you won't like it there? Oh, no, it isn't that. But you see, I don't really know my Uncle Ben. Perhaps he won't be happy about me going to Cameron Creek. You put that thought right out of your pretty head. You'll be welcome, no doubt of it. When the steamship arrived in Dawson, Sergeant Preston and Yukon King were waiting to board it. 
At the Bobby, he found it difficult to shoulder his way through the good-natured crowd that had assembled at the dock. Let me through, please. Sure thing. I'd like to board that ship. Coming through, please. Thank you. Hi there, Sergeant. Coming aboard? Yes, I'd like to see your skipper. Captain Winkers of Korea will call us. Oh, yes, I see him. Come on, King. Woo-hoo. Captain Winker. Preston and King. How are you? Me, I'm Vincent Uri Yaw. I'm glad to see you. You're looking fine. And King. <laughs> Hello there, you four-legged typhoon. <laughs> well, looks like the winter's done you good. Your fur is as handsome as the new mainsail. You'll spoil King with such flattery. <laughs> well, seriously, Preston, I'm glad to see you. How are things going in the Yukon? Oh, we managed to keep busy. You're going to be busier when the landlubbers I've just landed get into circulation. They're a bad lot. Do you have a passenger named Margie Winton? I, I do. She's below deck in her cabin. How, how do you know about her? The inspector received a telegram from the bank in Seattle asking us to meet the girl and see that she reaches an uncle who lives at Cameron Creek. Yeah, it was the banker who brought her to the boat. The girl's father died and left just about enough to pay her passage. Come along, I'll take you to the cabin. All right. Come on, Ken. Do you know Ben Winton? The girl's uncle? No. Do you know the Cameron Creek area where he lives? No, I don't, but Constable Blake's been there. He made a map for me. Careful stepping through the hatch. Cabin's below. The uncle has a gold claim. Supposed to be fairly well off. I'm glad to hear that. Will you travel by sled? Yes, Captain. Here we are. Miss Winton, it's Captain Winker. Yes, Captain. Oh, what a beautiful Miss dog. Margie. Miss Margie, this is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant, Miss Margie Winton. Oh, uh, well, how do you do? How do you do, Sergeant? And what's the matter, Sergeant? Well, uh, I understood that the girl was young. Sergeant, do you think 20 is terribly old? Oh, why, no, not at all. I, I mean, I had the impression you were a child. <laughs> Sergeant Preston is to see that you reach your uncle safe and sound. How nice. I couldn't help wondering who would be meeting you. Is this your dog? Yes, oh. name's King. Oh, how friendly he is. Do you know my Uncle Ben, Sergeant? No, I don't. Uh, neither do I. Uh, I mean, I've never seen a picture of him. You see, he was always traveling, but he never came to Seattle where we live. A few years ago, he wanted to come here to search for gold, but he had no money. Saw the grub station. When Uncle Ben found gold, he wrote and said half of it belonged to Dad. And now, since your father died, it's yours, huh? Yes. Oh, I'm so anxious to meet Uncle Ben. How soon can we start, Sergeant? Well, you'll need clothing for the trail. Oh, I have everything. Parker, mittens, McLuck. Oh, well, in that case, I'll go ashore and line up the team. I'll call for you in 30 minutes. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, how about you and your whole family going to the baseball game? You'll have the time of your lives. Seeing those smashing home runs, watching exciting double plays and strikeouts, eating peanuts and Cracker Jack. Why not go this very week? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Yep, admission is absolutely free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. And you can get your free ticket immediately. No mailing, no waiting. Free baseball tickets are right inside packages of Quaker popped wheat, Quaker popped rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. In Quaker Paco 10, you get two free tickets. Names of the teams and dates of the games are on every ticket. Remember, the more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals mom gets, the more free baseball tickets you get. So tell mom you want to eat lots of Quaker popped wheat or popped rice, Muffet shredded wheat or Quaker Paco 10. And just think of the fun you'll have at the ball game, seeing real star players in person and cheering for home runs. Now to continue, Cameron Creek was a fast-flowing stream of turbulent water that never froze. It raced along the center of a wide canyon in the desolate part of the Yukon. On the rim of the canyon, Ben Winton was at work on a strange-looking contrivance. It was a metal cylinder about a foot in diameter, supported on a frame of heavy timbers. A rope wound around the drum and then extended over the edge of the canyon and down to the bank of the creek 50 feet below. Ben, absorbed in his work, didn't notice a powerfully built man who approached. Yeah, that should loosen it. Hello there. 
Oh, howdy, stranger. I didn't hear you coming. You took me somewhat by surprise. I'm sorry if I startled you. It's all right. I'm glad to see you, human. It's mighty lonesome around here. Now you're traveling light. Well, I had bad luck. My my dog team was caught in a snooze slide and swept into a ravine. I, I lost my dogs, my sled, and all my gear. That sure was bad luck. You hungry? I could do with some grub. I haven't eaten since yesterday. <laughs> You've come to the right place. I'm just the man to fill you up. Right. My name's Winton, Ben Winton. Well, I'm glad to know you, Winton. Call me Myrtle. All right. Uh, just stick around a couple of minutes while I finish working this winch. Yeah. Then we'll go inside. And I'll scrub a few layers of grease off my hands and lay out a meal. So that looks like a sort of a hoist. <laughs> That's just what it is. I rigged it up myself. I got this metal drum in Dawson. It came from an old ship. Oh. It was used to wind up the anchor chain. I see. I've been trying to fix it so it would work easier. I'll show you how it operates. So I'd take a hold of this crank and turn. So. <laughs> You see how the rope's winding up? Yeah. Uh, needs more grease. The uh, rope goes to the floor of the canyon, huh? Yep. So what's on the end? Uh, big bucket. Yeah. Now I'll try again. Well, now it seems to work without squeaking. <laughs> it works fine now. You uh, haul water from below, is that it? Water? <laughs> Not in your life. I haul gold ore. Gold ore? Just so. Uh, you'll see in a minute. I filled the bucket a little while ago. Well, uh, where does the ore come from? My claim. The richest ore I ever saw. Where is your claim? Down below. There's a tunnel into the canyon wall. I found the tunnel a few years ago and used it for shelter during a storm. I started poking at the walls and found gold ore. Did, uh, did you find your claim? Yep, I took care of that when I saw what the ore is saved. <laughs> Now, when we get to the cabin, I'll show you how I refine the ore and get the gold out. <laughs> One of these days, I'll have enough to go to Dawson and buy some real machinery. How do you, uh, how do you get below? There's a path over yonder, a hundred yards or so beyond the house. Over there, the canyon wall is slanting instead of straight down. Now, the path's all right, unless you're carrying a hundred pounds of ore. Then it's mighty tough climbing. There. There's the bucket right at the rim. I fastened the winch by dropping this lever into the cogwheel. Well, that's a clever hoist you've rigged up. <laughs> it works first rate. You see, I go below, fill the bucket, then come here and hoist her up. I'll lift the bucket over the rim and unhook the rope and tow it to the house. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, fine. If you want a job, I could do some help around here. Well, thank you. As Merkel watched Ben went and kneel at the edge of the canyon to reach for the heavy oil filled bucket... His brain was suddenly inflamed by greed. Gold was his for the taking. It might be months, perhaps a year, before anyone learned of Ben Whitten's death. By that time, Merkel could be in the States, a wealthy man. Acting on sudden impulse, he stepped forward, placed a hand on Ben's back and shot. Hey, stop! Merkel hurried to the house and made himself at home. In the shed, he found partially refined gold in a leather pouch, a simple homemade refinery and a supply of ore. He found an ample supply of food and made a meal. Then he went through Ben Winton's letters and papers and learned much about the dead man's background. Finally, he took a coat from a peg in the wall and tried it out. It's first rate. I can even use his clothes. <laughs> now I'll find that pad and go below. It's probably somewhere in the tunnel to hide the body. Someone coming. Merkel stood at the open door, frowning darkly as he watched an approaching sled drawn by a strong dog team. He saw a girl on the sled, and a Mountie traveling behind him. Oh, the confronted look. The girl on the sled waved one hand. Merkel responded half-heartedly. Hello. Hello. Hello, Uncle Ben. I like you. Huh? Hello. Quiet down, boys. Quiet. You, uh, you say you are Margie? Yes. Oh, I'm surprised. You are Ben Winton, Marshal. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure I am. Uncle Ben, this is Sergeant Preston. He was kind enough to bring me from Dawson. Glad to know you, Ben. And this is his lead dog, Yukon King. King, will you shake hands with Uncle Ben? Get ready, King. Don't be afraid of King, Uncle Ben. He's very gentle. He doesn't look gentle to me. If you'll go inside, Miss Winton, I'll join you as soon as I've taken care of the dog. All right. You are going to ask us in, aren't you, Uncle Ben? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure thing. We'll step inside. I don't wonder you're surprised, Uncle Ben. Funny, isn't it? We're close relations, yet we're total strangers. Am I anything like you expected? Well, sort of. 
I thought you'd resemble Dad, but you don't got a bit. Uncle Ben, I, I have bad news. Father passed away three months ago. Your father died? At my, uh, my brother Bill? Yes, it was unexpected. Well, I'm mighty sorry to hear that. Uh, I never looked for Bill to die. The fact is, I was reading his last letter over again just a little while ago. He, he didn't say he was ailing. Poor Dad. He did so want to come here and work the claim with you. To uh, work the claim with me? Well, yes. In your last letter a long time ago, you told of finding gold. You reminded Dad that half the claim was his for grub staking. For grub staking, you ask us to come up here. Oh, yes, that's so. Um... Why, don't you remember? Uh, sure, now I remember. After the funeral, I, I talked to Mr. Markham. He's a banker in Seattle. He suggested that I come here and find out just what the claim amounts to. Well, I'll tell you, Margie, it's somewhat disappointing. It's not what I thought it would be. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Stay there, King. You two have become acquainted? <laughs> We're making progress, Sergeant Preston. Winton, isn't this your hammer? Huh? Why, yes. Also, this can of grease. I found them both beside your hoist. Well, I, I forgot them. I was working on the hoist. Your work seems to have been interrupted. Why do you say that? Footprints in the snow. Huh? They lead from the trail to the vicinity of the hoist where the snow is packed down. I looked over the edge of the canyon, Winton. I was impressed there's something wrong. I'm sure your uncle has something to tell me. What's the matter? Why are you so tense? Mudgie, when Sergeant Preston looked over the edge of the canyon, he saw a dead man. It was an accident, Sergeant Preston. I, I meant to tell you what happened as soon as I had the chance. Tell me now. Well, I, I was working on the hoist. I didn't see the man until he was right up close. He introduced himself and started talking. He seemed real friendly. His name? He called himself Michael. Huh? Go on. He'd heard about my claim and was asking for work. Meanwhile, I hauled up a bucket of ore. I saw that at the edge of the cliff. Yeah, it's still there. Well, I went to reach for it to lift it to solid ground when this Myrtle came rushing at me. There was a wild look in his eye, the look of a killer. I only had a split second glance, but I'll never forget that look as long as I live. I saw him just in time to drop flat on my face and hug the ground. Well, he missed me and went over the edge. The murderer. He deserved to die. I'm telling you, I was mighty scared. I... I was shaking like a leaf. I came here to the house to sort of get a hold of myself. You didn't go below to make sure the man was beyond help? I didn't need to, certain prison. It's rock down there. I, I could see by looking down that the man was dead. Ah. I intended to get down later, but you and Margie came along. How do you get below? Well, there's a path a couple of hundred yards north of the house. They must bring up the body. We'll, uh, we'll have to use the hoist. I'll lower the bucket and go down the trail and fasten the rope around the dead man. When I return, we'll hoist him up. Sergeant Preston, I, I never laid a hand on that man. It, it's just like I told you. The sergeant believes you, don't you, Sergeant? So far, there's no reason to doubt the story. Don't worry, Uncle Bennett. Come on, Jim. Oh, you have work to do. Sergeant Preston went first to the homemade winch and lowered the bucket. Then he followed a path of hard-packed snow along the canyon rim until he reached the place where it was possible to descend. With King at his heels, he moved along the bank of the stream to Winton's Tunnel. There was no doubt that the man who lay on the rocks near the tunnel's mouth was dead. Now we move the bucket, King, and we'll tie the end of the rope around the body. The Mountie was about to untie the rope when he noticed the dead man's outflung hand, which lay palm up. The fingers were black with fresh grease. Strange. He looked at the other hand. It, too, gave evidence of having worked on machinery. Both hands were hard and callous. The hands of a man who uses a pick and shovel. A laboring man. Preston thought for a moment. Then he stood back and studied the man's face from several angles. The nose and forehead are very similar to Margie's. And then he realized the truth. King, this was no accident. This was murder. <laughs> this man is Winton. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. It's a hit! There it goes into the right field stands! It's a homer! Oh, boy, kids, what fun it is at the ballpark! Come on out to the game. Come now as guest of a major or minor league team. It's your chance to get free baseball tickets. If you are 12 years or younger, you can see a major or minor league baseball game free with a paying adult like mom or dad. Bring the whole family and make a big day of it. This very day, or first thing tomorrow morning, you can get a free baseball ticket. No mailing, no waiting. It's right inside a package of Quaker Pop wheat or Quaker Pop rice or Muffet shredded wheat. 
or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry to get your free baseball ticket in the special package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Now to continue. After Sergeant Preston left the cabin, the man who called himself Ben Winton was increasingly uneasy. He watched through a small window when the Mountie moved along the canyon rim and started the descent. And then for some time, he paced the floor. His replies to Margie's questions were vague. Finally, the girl said, Uncle Ben, is there any reason for you to be so worried? Good mother. He won't blame you for the death of that man, Merkel. Even if you'd shot him, he'd have been justified. It would have been self-defense. You've learned the truth. He's bound to... I left footprints in the snow. You know they're mine. For the boy who'll see a family resemblance, he'll probably see it was a dead man who was working the winch. You may as well know the truth. I'm not your uncle. My name is Michael. Oh, no. It's your uncle down there on the canyon floor. And you killed him. Panic filled the girl's heart. For a moment, she could only stare incredulously at the man who had moved close to the chair in which she sat. I killed him, yeah. I've been trying to figure a way out, a way to save my neck without killing you in prison. There is no way. Oh, you think you can kill it? They can only hang me once. Oh, no. Marty, no. staring at the distorted, hate-filled face of the killer, saw Merkel's hands reach toward her throat. Then everything went black. She slumped to the chair, unconscious. Well, that makes it easier. I hate to do it, but it's my life or hers and Preston. Just then, Merkel saw Sergeant Preston pass the window. I found him. He's back too soon. I'll have to take care of him and then the girl. The killer leaped back from the chair and grabbed a stick of firewood. Holding it as a club, he took a position close to the door. Preston's hand was on the latch outside. Merkel raised the club. Sergeant Preston had returned to the cabin with the knowledge that the man inside was not Ben Winton. He knew that Winton lay dead on the floor of the canyon and had reason to suppose he had been murdered. King was at the Mountie's side when Preston gripped the doorknob. Quiet, King. The great dog sensed that danger was close at hand. But Preston had no way of knowing that Merkel was waiting just inside the door with an upraised club. I'll see what that man has to say for himself. Preston pushed the door and took one step. And then the club descended. King leaped at Sergeant Preston. Merkel tried to swing the club again, but King was much too fast. The huge dog closed his jaws on Merkel's arm. The club fell to the floor. Merkel reached for his free hand for King's throat. King shook free and tightened his grip on the man's arm. Merkel stumbled against the table. The table spilled, and then both man and dog went down. Merkel was fighting for his life. He tried to gain his feet, to reach a knife on a nearby chair. But King was aroused as he'd never been before. He had never known such hate as that he felt for the man who had clubbed his master. There was no familiar voice to order down King. King wanted to bring all the pressure of his mighty jaws to bear on Merkel's arm. He wanted to bring his fangs together and then move his attack to a more vital place. But training conquered instinct. King had been taught to attack, to hold, but not to kill. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston's eyelids fluttered. His hat had taken some of the force from Merkel's blow. He was at first only vaguely conscious of the wild struggles close at hand. And then his brain cleared. He saw King struggling with Merkel. Inch by inch, Merkel squirmed nearer to the knife. He reached up with his free hand. He gripped the weapon. He was turning it toward King when Margie opened her eyes and screamed. And then Sergeant Preston fired from the hip. All right, King. Down, boy. I'll take over. King's heart thrilled to the sound of that voice. His partner was alive. Stay where you are. Sergeant, Sergeant, he killed my uncle. He's going to kill both you and me. I must have trained him. Steady, Margie. You're all right now. Oh, that, that thief, that murderer. Well, dress his wounds and take him into Dawson. After I've returned for your uncle's body, I'll take you to the inspector. He'll help you make plans to sell or work this gold mine. Chin up now, Margie. Much to be done. Uh, I'll be all right. Good girl. All right, King. I'll take care of the prisoner. Just a few details, and then we'll say this case is closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. The hills and canyons of the Old West echo the exploits of one of the truly great trailblazers of the mid-19th century, the daring and fearless Wild Bill Hickok. 
back in the days when the West was young and ruthlessness was at the end of a six-shooter, Wild Bill began his career as an Indian scout. Later, he became a stage driver along the Santa Fe and Oregon Trail and was known as the greatest marksman of all. During the life of this famous Westerner, as a sharpshooting U.S. Marshal, we find spine-tingling adventure in the best tradition of the Old West. For when Wild Bill rides, excitement and suspense ride with him. So, get ready for action to live again through the historic era of two-gun justice. You can thrill to the colorful adventures of Wild Bill Hickok every Sunday with screen star Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his deputy Jingles on Mutual over most of these stations. As the sergeant drove into the Eskimo village, the chief hurried to meet him. Okay. Sergeant, white men come here. Steal all meat Eskimo have. White men? You're 500 miles from the nearest settlement. Men come from whaler caught in ice. Maybe men on ships starve, but now Eskimo starve. Now Eskimo must fight. Not yet, Angatak. I may have a chance to talk to the men on the whaler. To preserve law and order in the frozen wastes beyond the Arctic Circle, where food is more precious than gold, and men are ready to kill to get it. That is the task the sergeant faces. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company. Makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. Thank you.